you hungry? We fix your plate? Yeah. Huh? Would you fix your plate for me? It's, no, no, no. Just fix your record and then you come in. He said he's going next, so. That's no, no, I'm yeah. Doing. Okay, and then you're going to. I want to make sure y'all on this. Me yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Definitely, I want everybody to move you all the way here. Yeah. Yeah, that's Miss Cheryl. She, she's the lady that helped us put Cheryl Jackson here. She's the one to help us. Cheryl, she gave us donations helping us out right here. Helping Connie Johnson out right here with her. This is Kathy Burkhall to my friend. This is Kathy Burkhall to my friend, Cheryl. And I told her how you helped us out with donations. and. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Why can't you tell me Cheryl was going to open the cafe? I can be the cook. Well, we have, that's all, you know, I get a chance. Cheryl will be driving, make me do things I don't want to do at time. <laughs> you little ones, keep eating in front of Keep doing what you're doing. Y'all all right. I just want to make sure everybody sees y'all were here. Right, all right, all right. Now you make sure that little one eats. That's it. All right. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. So, Gay, okay, uh, you ain't ready to speak. Like I said, I've sent a comment to you. And uh, Miss Cockerbot, like I said, you're going to be basically the lead up there in the... Uh, I'm going to be up there. The lead up there in our pound. We'll give y'all about 20, 30 minutes. Then we're going to get ready to just have a, you know, meet and greet. Have her just head out. Where's the man at? She's supposed to come in. She's going to be a little late. Uh, okay. She's coming. She said, because, you know, she always every which way. Man. Yeah, she's, right. she's trying to get in their house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she, I'm, I'm working with a lag too. I'm, I'm doing the legal part of it for us, so we're going we're gonna to probably get it for her. So, what you want me to do? Just, you're up there and just want to let you lead off as far as the domestic the violence. Okay. Yeah, you know. Okay. So, yeah. You know, I'm really proud of man. To be rapping, being 44, and I tried to bring youngsters up, up under me because I felt like it was a young man's pastime. However, God just kept dropping lyrics in my spirit, and um, I have to spit it how he gives it. Come on, this come on. this uh, song is actually based out of uh, 1 Peter 5 and 7, which says, Cast your cares unto the Lord before he cares, or for he cares for you. And the quick, fast, and the hurry ties in because a lot of times we don't do that. We, we, we mope, and we groan, and we... Uh, had pity parties and stuff like that and I caught myself doing that and I said man I need to cast my cares unto the Lord quick fast and in a hurry <laughs> now the chorus that is intertwined within this song was introduced to me by a good friend of mine named Daryl Clayton over 25 years ago and I make mention of that because we just funeralized um, Daryl Clayton last week uh, Friday here and Saturday in Idabel. But I want to dedicate this, for lack of a better term, performance to him because of the impact that he had on my life. And um, the song is named Cast Your Burdens Unto Jesus For He Cares For You. And it goes, Cast your burdens unto Jesus For he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus for he cares for you. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. I say quick, fast, in a hurry. Cash your cares on him. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. I say quick, fast, in a hurry. 
I ain't gon' try to front like I ain't got no worries Life will hit you with some flurries that'll make you run or scurry Hurry, hurry, step right up, let me introduce my guy He the one that turned of a virgin birth and then left the earth in the sky I done been through infinite trials plus a bang of tribulations Had my fair share of truth for dirt plus life or death situations Yet his grace is so amazing He saved the wretch like me, may sound country fire But he hung and died on the rugged cross of a tree Just like Ellie M-N-O-P. I'ma keep it plain and simple You might have money longer than train smoke But this train fills the temple It ain't coincidental Man, he make it rain for real Got that stove house, not the pole house So you need to know the deal While them others kill and steal Then perpetuate false truth He say super like some polygrip He don't never slip false truth He don't need to sleep nor slumber Peep the lord of the thunder No look Westbrook with the best book Get the test to no wonders Cash your birth Unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your cares on him, quick, fast, and a hurry. Quick, fast, and a hurry. I say quick, fast, and a hurry. Cast your cares on him, quick, fast, and a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. I say quick, fast, in a hurry. Casting all your cares on him, for he really cares for you. When you don't know what to do, he be the deity to come through. If your mammy let you down, he will gladly pick you up. And if your pappy wasn't around, he will happily fill your cup. If your mate get to tripping, you might run a check. Make sure Christ is the head, spite them percolating they neck. If you say what the heck, Ain't nothing to this lyric, don't be sleeping, G, cause this frequency straight emanate from the spirit. Hear it, calling out your name, not pretend to lend no ear. Let him take away that pain, that hurt that's working, that fear, that tear that you shed. Thinking everything was hopeless, God can put it back in your wild head, so maintain your focus. Catch your burden <laughs> unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens. Unto Jesus, for he cares for you. All right. Cash your cares on him. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. I say quick, fast, in a hurry. Cash your cares on him. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. I say quick, fast, in a hurry. Super, 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 supernatural power. Super, super. Super, 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 supernatural power. Thank y'all. Abusive type relationship. Um, I previously had witnessed him hitting her or, you know, just beating her periodically. Um, verbal abuse. Um, but this particular day. We were at my sister's basketball game. Um, and we walked out the basketball game. At the end of the basketball game, there was a young man who had trouble with his car. Um, so my mother... Firstly, I received a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in rehabilitation counseling, and a master's in visual rehabilitation. Right. This past July, I just received my license in professional counseling. Um, All right. I'm 27 years old. Amen. Um, that is my testimony. I am blessed to be here, and I thank this organization for even seeing something in me to ask me to come speak. As the video stated, I was five years old when my mother was killed in front of me. She was stabbed six times in my room in front of me and my sister. Her name was Catherine Sharon Powers. She had been in an abusive relationship from about 1989 until her death of 1992. Uh, he wasn't our father. My mother had three children. I was the youngest of uh, the three. Um, and we were very, very, very close. Um, just witnessing her murder, it took a lot out of me. At five years old, I was very quiet, but I was angry. I was very attitudinal, and I just didn't trust people at, at all. Um, my grandmother is my life-saving guardian angel. Amen. Um, Amen. The night that she got killed, my mother, they just called her and said, do you want Dorisha? And she said, what do you mean, do I want Dorisha? She said, Kathy just got killed. Do you want Dorisha? And I've been with that woman ever since that night. And I'm the woman I am because of her. So All I right. publicly say that. 
that my grandmother. Thank you. Um, yes. All right. I have carried this with me for the last 22 years, and it's a heavy, heavy, heavy burden to carry as a motherless child. So when I was listening to you guys talk about the impact that it has on children, it's real. All right. It's yes, ma'am. I live with this every day. I went into this field of counseling to save a child like me so that I can let them know that this is not something that you got to stay in. This is not the end of your life. This is not... This, your story is not done. You can write it however long you want to. And after I just really started understanding what had happened to her, I started to want to be her advocate. I wanted to voice my opinion. I wanted to let people know that it's not okay to abuse anybody. It's not okay to put your hands on somebody and make them feel that they're less than. And I wanted my voice to be heard because her voice could never be heard again. So when I was 19 years old, I'm going to tell you my journey to where I am now from just seeing her get killed. I was 19 years old and the man that killed my mother, I had to testify. And being that I was five years old, they say, how does she remember that? Or somebody must be telling her what to say. It's a movie in my head and I can replay it every day of my life. Ah, come on. I can tell it from the front to the back. And people just look at me and they be like, you went through that? I sure did it but it's my testimony. But when I was 19 years old, I just wasn't really knowing a lot. A lot of people didn't want to talk to me about what happened. So I had to do my own investigation. And what I did was I came back from Oklahoma to California and I went to the DA's office and I had the DA in the court to pull all his files for me. Uh -huh. And I sat in that courthouse for two hours and I read three thick files of all the offenses that this man had had against him. And a lot of them, that article this young lady was talking about earlier, why didn't she leave? Well, my mother, he had stabbed her with scissors, shot at her, just she didn't leave. I'm not quite sure why, but she didn't leave. She That was her security blanket, she didn't leave. Didn't put a BPO out, the police came, she didn't want to press charges. Um, so as I'm reading this file, I'm getting more information of what she was going through that I didn't understand, and I really didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I seen the physical, yeah, I seen the bruises, but I didn't know to the extent of what was going on. Uh -huh. And so being in that courthouse, I was reading, and I found out that he had went up for parole um, in 2003, but nobody was notified. And thankfully, beautiful DAs and lawyers like yourself they are our advocates, but we can't be our own advocates. That's right. So the DA went out on our behalf and let them know that, no, he's not going to get parole because he maliciously killed this woman in a room where there was no way out with two small children. And this is verbatim because I've read it over and over. And it was just eye-opening. So after that, I made it my mission. I went up to the victim's advocate, the victim's unit, to put my name on the next of kin. So anytime this young man name crosses this board or anybody's desk, they notify me all the way in Oklahoma. They will send me a letter telling me that he's going up for parole. But in that time, I found out he was going up for parole. So what I did was um, I found out he was going up again in 2007. I was out here in grad school, so I was not able to attend. But I did write a letter to, on my behalf and my brother and my sister's behalf to be read at the probation hearing. And with that letter, it, he was denied the maximum five years. Um, and Come on. This year, 2015, January 14th, I will be traveling to Stockton, California to attend his next hearing so that he can see me. All right, now, come on. And see that he didn't break me. And that All right, come on. I'm here to make sure somebody else doesn't happen like this again. I'm here to make sure these kids know that they have a future. Like she said, our kids are our future, and if we don't teach them, nobody else is going to teach them. So this is what I'm here for, and I really, really appreciate everybody for coming out and the information that you guys have shared. Definitely, all right, with. all right. <laughs> but I, I truly love the fight, and I appreciate everybody for joining in the fight and just to speak up and speak out, all right? So thank, thank you. you. All right. All right. We ask a panel to come on up, sit on up here. Uh, a panel, come on up if you would. All right. Yeah. Everybody going up. We're going to run in a tight race here, y'all, because I got to get ready to try to pass out these awards and things. So 
after you, uh, after you, ma'am, we're going to let Miss Sen Senator Connie Johnson go. She said has some where she got to go as well. And a great, beautiful sister as well. Thank you all very much. I'm going to keep the awards. I ain't letting nobody. I'm going to keep it out. You, no, council. No, come on. Yeah, right, Alan. It ain't going to be no 4 o'clock. Come on. Up. That's why I told you I had you to speak on that. Up. No, I'll get you another seat. I didn't mean, No, see, I won't do the exit. She does it. Just, you know, I'll call you tell them. You're going to speak now, and then his panel. We have a panel of guests. They are our survivors. Um, and they have written books. And they've done a lot of things for the community. And we thank you for coming out. Um, the first person I want to call is Cheryl Craig White. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit about her. And Cheryl Craig White is the author of Voices Within Me. No. A poetic autobiography written in a series of heartfelt poems that invite you into her world of abuse and self destruction, uh, transcend, transcending into her walk with Jesus Christ. Cheryl is now an evangelist of the gospel and believes that she has been chosen to share the message of Jesus Christ um, that Jesus Christ did not abandon the abuse, and when there is only one set of footsteps in your walk, he is carrying you through the storm. She Amen. Has, she has performed in Hobbs, um, New Mexico, at the Lee County Commission for the Arts in the celebration of the 2014 Black History Month. She also performs public readings of her poetry throughout Oklahoma um, to include several churches and community events. She is the wife and pastor of Lady L. White, mother and grandmother. She has uh, served in the U.S. Army, achieved the ranks of, of sergeant, and served two overseas tours in Kuwait. Wow. She, has, she was honored with uh, four Army Achievement Medals and the, and the other achievement certificates. Cheryl is a member of the yearly Martin Luther King Parade Committee in Guthrie, uh, Oklahoma City, and also a member of the Writers' Vision Committee, the National the National Multicultural Writers Association. She volunteers weekly, reading to children at Guthrie Public Libraries, instilling the importance of literacy. She is currently attending Langston University, where she has obtained her BA in English Education. Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sounds like a mouthful, but it really isn't. All happened in a short amount of time. I think it took a lifetime. Um, I, on your program, it says that I am a survivor of domestic violence. However, I am the mother of a daughter who was um, who died because of domestic violence. Um, she survived four years after she had ran her over twice with the car and. Um, mutilated her body with 1,700 staples, partial dismemberment of her breasts, arms, and legs, and several uh, burns on her body from the undercarriage of the car, which was an old school Cadillac. So if you know what an old school Cadillac is, you know how big it is and how heavy it is. And um, when she passed away on February 12th of 2009, it was the darkest, hour of my life. Take your time. Come on. She was my firstborn. She was my first joy. She was my first happiness. She was my everything. She was my friend. She was my daughter, of course, and I had to be her mother, so there was times for discipline, but there were always good times. Though I was married for 26 years to her father, I was a single parent. Um, when I cried at night, she would get out of the bed and she would just come and wipe my tears away. I sure wish she was here today to wipe my tears away. But I now know 2 Corinthians 5, 8, and I'll read it because I don't like to miss a word when I'm doing God's word. Uh, from the King James Version, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent 
from the body and to be present with the Lord. I do now know where she is and I know that she is in a better place and she is happy and content. With that, I have dedicated a poem to her. In my book, The Voices Within Me, subtitled, Though the Struggle is Real, Hope is Alive. And um, I didn't start writing until late in, I was about maybe 49 or 50, when I 